Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to get from 1 to 99 agility. It's one of RuneScape's most hated skills, and it's actually one of my favorites. Hopefully this video will show you why. Now before we get to the actual training, I want to talk about a few important items that will not only save you time on the way to 99, but make your experience overall much better. First up, we have Marks of Grace. They're items that you can randomly receive while training agility, but only on rooftop courses. Oh, hi, Mark. Rooftop courses are available in most of RuneScape's major cities, and you'll be doing quite a few in this guide. Anyway, marks are awesome for a few reasons. First of all, you can use them to buy pieces of the Graceful outfit. Grace, the seller, is located underneath the Toad and Chicken pub in Berthorpe. Each piece you wear slightly increases your run energy restoration, and wearing the full set increases it by 30%. So, so if you've ever wondered why just about everyone you see in RuneScape wears this outfit, that's why. People even wear this thing to bosses like Barrows now. Anyway, in total you'll need 260 marks for the full set. Once you have the full set, you can use extra marks to either recolor pieces of it on Zaya by speaking to Austin, or you can spend them on Amelie's crystals which can be used to make stamina potions, or you can just sell those crystals on the Grand Exchange for a pretty decent profit. Stamina potions are probably my favorite potions in the game though. Each dose restores your run energy by 20%, and it also reduces the rate that your energy depletes by 70% for two minutes. Now if staminas are too expensive for you, energy and super energy potions are also an option, but they don't have that amazing run depletion rate reduction that staminas have. A lot of you are probably training agility so you can use one of the game's many shortcuts. If you're just a few levels away from the one you want to use, you can actually just boost your level to use it. The items shown on screen right now all temporarily boost your agility level and can all be purchased on the Grand Exchange for pretty cheap. You can also use these boosts to access higher level agility courses early, but it gets really annoying having to reboost. However, if you have the Preserve Prayer unlocked, you can use that to make the boost last 50% longer. Now, if you're up for a bit of a challenge, and maybe some light carpal tunnel, you can train skills like magic and fletching while also training agility. For magic, there's spells like high alchemy and magic imbue, and for fletching, you can make darts, bolts, and so on. Now, it's pretty rare that I recommend you use quests to train skills, but agility is a big exception. The entire skill is really slow, and the early levels are well, not fun. Questing can save you a big chunk of time and boredom. If you did all the quests I'm showing on screen right now, you could get from level 1 all the way to 33 agility. All of them do involve fighting things, but they can be done at a relatively low combat level, and I believe a few even have safe spots. Before I get to the actual training methods, there's one special method I want to talk about. It's so special that you don't have to actually drain agility. At level 48 fishing, 15 agility and 15th strength, you can start training Barbarian Fishing by speaking to Otto at Baxtorian Falls and doing a short tutorial. Just bring fishing bait or feathers with you and take the rod from under Otto's bed and get fishing at the spots right next to his house. Every fish you catch there will give you a little agility and strength XP. Now XP rates per hour vary by how many fish you catch, so I'll link a wiki calculator in the description so you can see how much you could be earning at your current levels. Now with all that out of the way, let's get to the actual training methods. For levels 1 to 10, if you've chosen not to do the quest I mentioned a few minutes ago, you're going to start training on the Gnome Stronghold course. You can earn a maximum of 8,000 XP per hour at this course, and you only need to do 13 and a half laps to reach level 10. At level 10, you unlock the Draenor Village rooftop course, where you can start earning Marks of Grace. As you can see, you'll be here a while as you need to do 102 laps. If you'd like, at level 20, you unlock the Alcarid rooftop course, which is a whopping 360 XP per hour higher. Normally I'd recommend swapping courses, but the XP difference is so small and it requires stamina potions to do efficiently, so I would personally just stick with Drainer. From levels 30 to 40, you'll be doing the Varrock rooftop course. Now this course involves a lot of running, so I'd recommend bringing a few stamina potions. Without them, you will run out of energy fairly fast, which will lower your XP rates a ton. At level 40, you unlock the Canifus rooftop course. It's the best place to collect Marks of Grace until level 60. The wiki estimates that you'll be able to earn on average 18 to 22 marks per hour, but after level 60 that number falls by 80%. So if your mark count is looking a little low, or if you want to rush the Grace
graceful outfit, stay here until level 60. 40 to 60 would instead take you 986 laps. From levels 50 to 60, you'll be doing the Falador rooftop course. Nothing too special about this one. It's just a few thousand XP more per hour than the Canifus course. Another option once you hit level 52 is the Wilderness Agility course. For this course, I'd recommend bringing stamina potions and maybe some food, and that's it. This course is in the wilderness and is actually a PKing hotspot, so you don't want to bring anything you don't want to lose. The reason people PK here is because there's always that one guy who forgets to deposit his stuff before training here, so don't be that guy. From level 60 to 72, you'll be doing the Sears Village rooftop course. Now this course is a little different from most. The only way to achieve maximum XP rates is if you have the candor and hard diary completed. This diary allows you to change the Camelot teleport to the Sears Village Bank, and it gives you 15% more marks of grace on the course. If you don't have this teleport, your rates will be slashed to about 40 to 45,000 XP per hour. So instead, if you already have full graceful, I'd recommend skipping to the next training method a little early. At level 72, you unlock the third floor of the Hallowed Sepulchre. You can do it at lower levels and with less floors, but you will receive a lot less XP. But from here on out, the Sepulchre is the best agility XP in the game, and even more so if you're not looting any coffins. But when looting coffins, you can make insane money here, especially once you unlock the final floor. Assuming you're only looting coffins on floors 4 and 5, you can make an estimated 2.7 million GP per hour. Now this all sounds really nice, but you should also keep in mind that you will need to have completed the Sins of the Father quest in order to access the Sepulchre. It's a pretty difficult quest, but it's very worth it. The Sepulchre is some of the most fun I've ever had in RuneScape, and it actually turns agility into an enjoyable skill. Not to mention, you could unlock the Black Graceful outfit here, which in my opinion is the best set in the game, but I'm definitely not biased. The Sepulchre does have a fairly big learning curve, but once it clicks, you'll be able to traverse the entire thing consistently without any problems. There are a few tools that I'd highly recommend to help you learn. First is Runelight's Agility plugin. In the options, you can have it highlight projectiles, obstacles, and challenges. Second is using tile markers, which are also part of Runelight, but they do exist in some form in RuneScape's Steam client. I've included a link below to a list of sepulcher markers that you can import into Runelight, along with a quick guide on what each tile means and how to use it. I'd also highly recommend turning on the Tile Indicators plugin and checking on Highlight Current True Tile and Highlight Destination destination tile. They will allow you to dodge traps and know where your character is actually going much easier. As for items, I'd bring at least full graceful, some food, and a Ceridomen item like a holy symbol. The Ceridomen item will allow you to restore your run energy by praying at the obelisk at the end of every floor. Now depending on a few other levels, you can also open the previously mentioned coffins to earn treasure like hallowed marks, which you can use at the shop in the lobby. To open coffins, you need 66 thieving and a lockpick, but I'd recommend bringing a strange old lockpick as it's faster and reduces the chance you fail. Failing a lock also has a chance to poison you, so I'd bring something like an antidote plus plus. Now to reach the coffins, you'll need to complete a challenge of some sort. The grapple challenge requires that you have 62 range, any crossbow except an armadillo crossbow, because if you use one, this happens when you use an obelisk, and lastly, you need a mithril grapple. The Ceridome and Brazier challenge requires 54 prayer and 2 vampire dust. The portal challenge requires at least 7 magic and an enchantment spell, so bring runes for the best enchantment spell you can cast, because the higher it is, the less chance it'll fail. Then you have the broken bridge challenge, which you can do at 56 construction with a hammer, saw, nails, and planks. I would recommend bringing the best planks and nails on this list that you have access to. Be careful not to mix and match nails though, or else it won't work. If you're doing mahogany planks for example, you need rune nails, and other nail types won't work. Overall, your first time setup should look something like this. As you earn more marks, you can exchange them for items in the previously mentioned shop that will make the sepulchre easier and less annoying. Now, as for the sepulchre itself, it's an agility course on steroids. Unlike a normal agility course, you only have a certain amount of time to complete each floor, and if you don't finish in time, the door to the next floor closes. Even if the door closes before you reach the end of the floor, you should still complete it to get the bonus agility XP. If 
If you're impatient though, you can just log in and out or hop worlds to be put back to the start. If you manage to make it all the way to the end without running out of time, you can loot the Grand Hallowed Coffin, which gives you a chance at the very expensive Ring of Endurance. The Sepulcher isn't for everyone though, so I'll be listing a few alternatives in just a second. At level 70, you unlock the Paul Nivnich rooftop course. Nothing really too special about this one. I just wanted to include it for those who might not have the candor and hard diary done, or for those who don't like the sepulchre. At level 75, you unlock the Priftinus Agility course, assuming that you've also completed the Song of the Elves quest. While training on this course, you have a chance to receive crystal shards by using these shortcut portals whenever they appear. Shards are used for crystal tools, divine potions, and so much more. The wiki estimates you'll find about 15 shards per hour on average with a 1 in 3 chance of every portal giving you one. At level 90, you unlock the Ardon Rooftop course. This course actually has the highest spawn rate of Marks of Grace, and if you have the Ardon Elite Diary done, it increases by another 25%. Another fun thing about this course is that Marks of Grace actually spawn in the same spot every time, they stack on top of each other, and don't despawn unless you stop doing the course for about 10 minutes. Even so, I'd pick them up frequently just to be on the safe side. Speaking of staying on the safe side, I like to use a VPN every time I browse the internet. More specifically, today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. They're fast, cheap, and really easy to use. Just download it, sign in, press the big button, and all your browsing data is encrypted and rerouted through their secure servers. First, this protects you from malicious websites stealing your IP. There's a ton of fake RuneScape websites out there, some of which can steal your IP and boot you offline, something that actually happens a lot whenever there's a big PvP tournament. Next, some internet service providers actually sell your browsing data to advertising agencies, and with ExpressVPN you can lock them out. ExpressVPN even has a no-logs policy, and their trusted server technology has raised the bar when it comes to security. If all that sounds good to you, my viewers can get three months of ExpressVPN for free with a subscription by visiting expressvpn.com slash colonello, or clicking the link in the description below. So that's about it. As always, a big thank you to the Old School RuneScape Wiki team, as much of the information in this guide was sourced from them. Thanks for watching.